Whispers and Other Strange Stories Written by Krina Ludmila Christia Narrated by Aaron Adams I had been walking on my own for three days when I saw it. The creature stood perched on the cliff, stared at the moon, and then started howling. From that distance, I could only see its silhouette, but it was large enough to make me fear it. I checked to see if my knife was still in its place and checked my surroundings. I had to find a place to hide, but where? It was almost dusk and I could tell the forest was getting thicker the more I advanced. I decided to set my tent at the base of a few large beech trees. I pondered whether to light a fire or not. I was afraid the animal was going to be attracted to it and come in my direction. I decided against it. I thought about what I saw earlier. I was aware that a large population of wolves still lived in this country, so I had expected to see one in one of these hikings. To be honest with you, I actually wanted to see one close. It was exhilarating to see an animal like this in the wild, but I had not expected it to be this large. I was slightly worried, but happy I had some weapons to protect myself with. I presumed I should be fine in my tent and fell asleep. I woke up early in the morning. The grass was covered with a thick dew and the earth smelled fresh, alive. I stretched, made myself some simple food, couscous with dried vegetables and chilies, to keep me going. I cleaned after myself and gathered my tent. I carried on walking. I had to find her. I expected to be near the property by now. For all I knew, I might have actually been inside it by then. I hadn't seen a sign or whatever, but I knew the forest was part of the land she owned. It was a massive property. Several hectares of wild landscape surrounded me. I saw several squirrels and rabbits on my way here, but now I was deeper into the forest. I expected to see deer soon. Just as I thought about the wonderful form of these animals, the smell of fresh blood hit my nostrils, and there, a few meters ahead of me, laying on the forest ground was a large stag, or at least what was left of it. I looked around me, but there was no sign of the killer. It was probably gone by now. The poor animal had been mostly ripped apart, viciously consumed. There was blood spattered on a few stinging nettles and other wild plants around where it had found its ending. I said a silent prayer and continued my walk, more aware of my surroundings and quite shaken by the bloody sight. I had seen dead animals before, but this was something else. I could barely shake the remains of the stag from my mind when I stumbled upon an even more horrifying sight the head of a wolf, torn from its body, just at my feet, hidden by the wild plants. I almost stepped on it. I shrieked in revulsion when I saw the bloodied fangs, but breathed in relief when I realized the animal was dead and couldn't harm me. But then the sudden realization hit me. Who had killed the wolf? What other creatures lurked in this forest? Was I in danger, more danger than I had anticipated? Well, that was still to be decided, but I was obviously in a little bit over my head by now. I started to regret the decision to come over here to this foreign place to do my research. The ladies offered to host me, to give me a place to stay while I looked for the flower, for answers, had been kind though, and I couldn't refuse it. I was also intrigued by it, I have to admit. Why the letter? Why me?